Okay, we got example one of hydrostatics. We have a, a lock, uh, concrete lock structure. Imagine we have a lock in this figure and we have a lock structure. Imagine it looks like a boat, for example, can transfer like the materials from the, like say, for example, this side, this lake to the upstream side from the other side. So we have like a two gates here, one upstream, one downstream or one upstream, downstream, whatever. We're just gonna define it here. And we said that uh, reinforced concrete lock structures, like the structure of the boat, for example, in this case, is uh, has been constructed in here in a dry dock. In this area is called a dock as well, as uh, in this case. And the weight of, or the mass of that lock structure is 7,500 or 7,500 tons. So we have that weight in here. And the lock dimensions, which is fit with the lock dimensions in the lock in here, is 60 meters long, 30 meters wide in plan. And it's the, looks like an open shoes box. Okay, so this is like the situation. The lock is, looks like that one. Uh, and the side walls are eight meters high. So these are the side walls are high, eight meters high. So the question in the first section is that, uh, if we can fill it with water, the lock, will the lock structure float in seawater of density of 1025 kilograms per cubic meter? And if so, what is this, this draft? For example, if we have like a floating situation, what is this draft? Uh, the freeboard. So the draft of the freeboard, the, the draft is the amount of the water, which is, uh, is, the, is the height of the lock, the structure, which is under the water. Okay, and the amount above the water for that structure is called freeboard. So the drought and freeboard together means the total height of the structure that we have. And uh, so let's look at like uh, for section A, how we're just gonna go ahead with that one. If we're just gonna go for that one, we need to just use the uh, buoyancy force and use the equation for the buoyancy force for that one. So that one, we have the equation that we learn, M is equal to rho V, or in other words, we can just rearrange that formula and we say that V is equal to M over rho. So the rho is the rho of the water, salt water, for example, in this case, and M is the mass of the lock structure. We need to just first calculate the volume. Uh, uh, so the question here is that we need to just make sure that what is, the, is floating first and what is the draft and the freeboard. So the volume can be easily calculated by the uh, mass uh, 7,500,000 5, kilograms, okay? We need to just write everything in metric units divided by 1025 kilograms per cubic meter. So the uh, result is 7317 cubic meters. So this is the volume. So we have the volume of the floating. So we, once we have, because we have like the plan dimensions, uh, length by width, so we can easily divide the volume by this dimension at the area to calculate the draft. So if you're just gonna do this one, the depth of immersion is equal to the volume 7317 divided by 60 times 30, which is equal to uh, 4.07 uh, meters. So this is the, uh, the draft of the lock. So this is the, uh, the depth of immersion is exactly the draft of the lock. And whatever which is above the lock, the uh, lock structure is the freeboard. So we have, if it's like the eight meters high, if it's like the depth of the, or the height of the wall, we can say like the eight meters minus 4.07, uh, 3.93 uh, uh, meters is the freeboard. So almost like the half, half, like half of that is under the water and half of that is almost is a freeboard. So this is uh, for section A. For section B, we just gonna see what additional weight will be required to sink the structure onto the seabed if the depth of the water is 5.3 meters, okay? Assuming that the structure is watertight. And so the section B asking that if the water the depth of the water is going to be 5.3. So what is the additional weight that we need to just do to sink the structure? So for this reason, we just have like the depth so we can easily calculate the buoyancy force first. 
uh, and then by using the like the relationship of the Archimedes principle and the buoyancy force, we can easily calculate the mass, and then uh, we can just see how much additional we need to just add to the like the original mass of the like the like the structure. So for that reason, let, let's just calculate the the volume. So the depth of immersion of the log is like a 5.3 meters. It is like a, a depth of immersion, 5.3. And the volume of water displaced can be easily calculated 5.3 times 60 times 30, 95, uh, 40 cubic meters. So this is the uh, volume of the water displaced or the depth of immersion. And then the buoyancy force can be easily calculated uh, based on the formula M is equal to rho V, for example. So we have the V here and uh, we have the uh, rho and because it's like a force, we can just multiply by G as well. So the rho is like the salt water, 1025 times G, a specific weight, okay? And times the V. So it is like the uh, uh, volume, it is like a 9540. So the result is equal to 95,927 uh, thousands uh, newtons or kilonewtons. Okay, so this is like the buoyancy force. If it's like a buoyancy force, so we're just going to need to just take it away from the weight of the like the like a structure to see how much additional or what is the additional weight to sink the like a structure. To calculate that one, we need to just uh, see this is like the 7500. So we need to just a uh, thousand needs to just multiply by the G to just calculate the weight of that lock, uh, original lock structure. It is equal to 73,575,000 uh, Newtons. So if you're just gonna take away this one from the 9,500, uh, sorry, 95,927, uh, we're just gonna get to uh, 22,352,000 Newtons. Newtons. So that is the like the weight in uh, excessive weight that is required to sink the lock onto the bed C. So that is section B. So let's look at the section C, the last section of example one. So if additional weight is to be provided by a blanket of sand with a density of like a uh, 2600 kilograms per cubic meter, how thick must uh, the layer of sand be? Imagine that uh, one ton is equal to a thousand kilograms. So if that is the case, we need to just see, for example, from the section, the previous section, we calculate the uh, additional weight that we need to sink is like a 22,352,000 uh, uh, newtons or kilonewtons. So we need to just convert this one or divide this one by the density that's provided here, the density of the stand, to calculate the volume of the sand and by using the dimensions that we have, dimensions of the like the like structure, we can calculate the depth of that. So for calculating this one, the volume of the sand is W divided by rho SG. Rho SG is like the specific weight, you know that. Uh, so the W here, 22,352 uh, times 10 to the three, okay, divided by uh, row of the sand is like a 2600 times 9.81. Just bear in mind, this kind of like 9.81 all the time because the weight is provided here is like a Newtons. We need to just divide this one by the like a G. If you don't like, you can convert that one, the previous example. I mean, this kind of like the weight, you can convert it to the mass and only use the mass here or the mass divided by the density here. It's up to you, whatever you like. So the result here is equal to 876 cubic meters. So this is like the volume of this excessive or additional like the weight of the sand because we divide by the sand. So the, uh, but we have the dimensions. If you're just gonna divide this volume by the dimensions, so 876 divided by 60 times 30 uh, is equal to 0.49 meters. So 0.49 meters is the like the minimum depth of the sand required to sustain the structure. So, I mean, we can say any kind of like the uh, blanket thickness greater than half a meter uh, will sink the like the uh, like structure. So this is the example uh, C. 
So we're just gonna look at another example uh, in this kind of like the uh, regards for the hydrostatic pressure and the buoyancy force. 